Hello and welcome back to Bannerlord. Now, here we go. We're up against our hardest enemy ever. No, I'm just I'm just kidding. Obviously, you can see that. Anyway, I'm just going to do a uh, auto resolve here very, very quickly. And uh, I just wanted to point out something here real quick. I have no idea what is going on with this guy, but he is stubborn like no one's business. It is literally one of those things where I just cannot get this guy to level up. I have been running around for a pretty significant amount of time. I've been doing a whole bunch of auto resolving and I have no clue what to do with this guy. I will show you him in just a second. He is the most stubborn borrowed troop. Ah, oh, there we go. He's actually starting to level up now a little bit, but literally I have been fighting and fighting and fighting looters and looters and looters all over the place. And you know what this guy's doing? Nothing. He's doing nothing. He's just literally standing there, not getting any experience, and making this very, very stressful for me indeed. Because I'm thinking to myself, am I going to fail the task because this guy can't get any experience in the auto-resolve fight? And I'm just thinking, why? Why? Why is he like this? Why is he doing this to me? Anyway... <laughs> we're in a pretty decent position otherwise and uh, well what do i mean by that well look at look at my money my money is doing pretty fantastically right now and uh yeah we, we've just sold another 800 of that and we can also go into the smithy if we want to as well i do have quite a bit of uh, smithy stamina at the moment so we might as well do a little bit of smelting a little bit of smelting and there we go and a little bit of extra smelting and then we obviously want to get some refinements done as well. Let's actually do a whole bunch more refining just to make sure that we have enough charcoal here. And then we will continue to do some of this. There we go. And we'll continue to do this as well. Nice. And a little bit more refining. And that's it. That's all I have to do. No more energy, unfortunately. So I could just wait here for a little bit of time, but I I don't really mind just running around a little bit and seeing what's what, seeing what's happening. All right, so this guy's actually a Kuzate. He is a Kuzate culture fellow, and I'm thinking that we might want to get him into my party. We have had a run-in with him earlier in the series, and I thought, ah, you know, haha, uh, you know, took him out in a in a in a, in a, in a tournament. You know, we we killed him in a tournament. We actually shot him in the face. Uh, or in the eye, more specifically. And it's kind of amusing that he's, his name is I and I. I think someone actually did say that in the comments as well. But anyway, uh, tell me about yourself. I'll tell you a tale of life in the Great Crusade Hordes, Terror of the Worlds. I fought for Ulus Khan and for Muntrug Khan and even for the Old Urken. But I fight on foot. My family's from the town, not the steppe. Life's a little different for us. The horse lords, the men of the great tribes. Well, they gallop here and they gallop there. Shooting this and shooting that. They win battles, I'll give them that. But at the end of the day, if the enemy is still laughing at you behind their walls, all that galloping means nothing. We foot sloggers, we're the ones who go up the ladder and into the meat grinder. Did that for 25 years, and I'm still alive. <laughs> yeah, I'm still getting less pay than some boy fresh off his mother's tit who happens to own a horse. Piss on that, I said. And I went looking for other work. Okay, well, very good. Nice to know. Uh, do you maybe want to go to the barber a little bit? Because he's looking hes looking pretty frazzled. Got to say that. He's looking pretty frazzled, but I don't mind. You know, he's uh, he, can have his, he can have his hair any way he wants it. 3,700 for this guy? I don't, I don't believe that I'm paying this amount for him. Wow, he's not that good, is he? But he, f he fights on foot. Does he have to fight on foot? I'm actually now worried because maybe I got a guy that I don't really don't really want. He has riding skill. He's got a hundred riding skill. You're going to ride a horse, sir. You are going to ride a horse. Let's go to my inventory real fast and uh, actually see what he's see what he's using right here. Okay, so we'll just give him some random arrows, and we'll give him a wait a minute. What is he actually using? He's using a sumter horse. Okay, we'll give him a desert horse. We'll give him a step horse, actually. And there we go. All right, and then we'll give him a harness that is a little bit better for him. And that is absolutely fine. All right, so he'll hopefully do relatively nicely. But 
Anyway, as I was saying, this guy is the most stubborn borrowed troop I have ever gotten. Also, bear in mind that uh, these borrowed troops, they do tend to get injured very easily in the, re in the uh, auto resolves. And it is making things very difficult for me to level them up, apart from the fact that, oh, everyone wants me to train the... Wait a minute, wait, wait a minute. Is that the guy that actually asked me to do that? Yeah, that's the guy. I have two days. Two whole days. I am livid. Absolutely livid. I can't believe that he has literally taken this long. I have fought maybe, I don't even know, 15 looter parties or something like that. And as you can see, he's barely leveling up at all. And I have no idea why, because I have been fighting high tier units as well. I mean, not high tier, but I've been fighting a lot of looters. So um, a couple of times I, I saw, oh, hello. Hello, come on. Ah, no, I wanted to go and help them. Ah, oh, well, never mind. But yes, a couple of times I saw uh, basically 20 something looters all over the place. And it seems like I'm actually going to be failing this one. You know what? I'm going to go in here and I'm going to speak to him. And I'm going to say, hey, can you just take these ones? Well, the variable's not being set, so I would assume that uh, I would assume that I can't. Ah, uh, the trials and tribulations of training units that refuse to level up. And I'm serious. He re he literally refused multiple times to gain experience. <laughs> because after a while, I thought to myself, okay, I'm gonna start looking at this, at this, at this particular unit. I'm gonna start seeing what he's actually gaining. And it seemed to me like he was gaining a pretty decent amount of experience every single time we'd fight. But in actual fact, he wasn't. He was literally just, I don't know, just messing around in some way. But anyway, uh, I think we'll probably just uh, spend our time doing this then. Or not, <laughs> as the case may be. What an insane hideout. 39 step bandits? I don't even know what is going on right now. My game is just absolutely punishing me to no end. I, I can't believe it. Oh, there's medicine. Yes. I like leveling up my medicine skill. It's actually quite fun to do that. And look at this. Yes, he's now gaining experience. I find it so hilarious how just when the task is about to finish, he's like, oh yeah, now I can level up. Now I can level up. I don't mind. Yes. Uh, can you tell that that guy has literally driven me a bit insane? Literally just because of that? It's so crazy. Ah, Family Feud. Okay, fantastic. Let me let me do something a little bit therapeutic, shall we say. All right, so yeah, there we go. I will protect your relative a little bit at least. Okay, wait a minute. Where's the guy? There he is. Sasal. Did we not take Sasal before? I feel like I'm having a deja vu moment here because I'm pretty sure I... I knew a Sasal in a previous attempt where I completely failed. And you've seen those, you know. You've seen those. So maybe not. Maybe not. But anyway, let's see if I can, uh, well, take him to where he needs to go. All right, so one question. Why is a Sugan of Pavastan sitting on the snow? Personally, I feel like that is probably not going to be very comfortable. And he's probably going to have some issues, isn't he? He's probably going to have some issues. Okay, so is this the guy that I actually even need to speak to? Oh, I have so many quests now as well. It's actually kind of annoying. Yeah, okay. So yeah, it is actually it is actually this. Did he spawn in with me even? Oh, now he's giving me all kinds of problems. Now two of them are sitting on the snow. What? They're not even sitting on anything. This is going to be extremely cold, isn't it? I don't know why they're not in their nice little hut here. I mean, it would make more sense, wouldn't it? I mean, this is really, really cozy in comparison to sitting on the snow. Bidal, if you do not get out of my way right now, I will shoot you in the face. I have given you a warning. Three, two... Nah, I'm just kidding. I'm not going to shoot him in the face. I'm just going to try and... Could, 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 no, no, are you... Are you serious right now? Come on, Bidal. You are trapping me in the hut. And look, there's our friend that needs to talk to that guy over there. And now he's standing in here as well. Okay, fine. Come in then. Come in then. Yes, exactly. Bidal, he just wanted to get out of the snow. He's not used to it. He doesn't really like the snow. 
All right, so where? Oh no, there, there, there's the guy. All right, so they're not actually both sitting on the snow this time. Have you come to your own funeral? We've just come to talk. All right, so I'm just going to say you're breaking the law, and we're going to try and do a little bit of persuading, and we'll see how that goes. Seventy-four percent chance. All right, nice. Yeah, a little bit of a success right there. And now we have a fifty-nine percent, and there you go. There's another success there as well. Fantastic. 739, we have increased our relation with that fellow once again by a pretty significant amount, and I'm happy with it. I'm very, very happy with that. Now, we almost have enough to be able to get another workshop, and I will probably be getting another workshop as well. Um, and I'm probably going to be getting it probably... Uh, there's sheep here, there's grain, there's quite a lot of grain around here, so I think I might get like a bakery or something like that, or if there's that kind of workshop, or grain is used to make beer as well, isn't it? So, technically I could do that, that would be kind of cool. Okay, so I'm going to try one more band of looters, uh, I think I failed it just now. Yep, that is indeed a failure for us. Which is very frustrating to me, to be honest, because as I said, I've literally been fighting the... Look at him. Look at him. Look. Look. What? I... Uh, okay, yeah. Never mind. Let's calm down. No need. No need to get, uh, no need to get annoyed by it. But uh, you know what? You know what's going to happen now? Uh, I'm, I'm actually unsure. I'm actually unsure. I was thinking of just kicking them out of my army straight away. But now I'm thinking that maybe there's going to be another training troop quest. And maybe I don't need to train as many people. Because I already have six or seven of them. And it's just hilarious how as soon as that guy has leveled up, that's when the quest ends. Such a classic, is it not? Ah, escorting a merchant caravan, eh? I think this will probably be quite fun. So we're going to do this and we'll see how it goes. I did attempt to uh, take out a bandit hideout. Let me just say it didn't go well. Didn't go well. So, yeah. Uh, kind of grinds my gears that I can't actually do anything very good in actual melee combat. So generally I'm going to be outmatched by quite a few people unless I'm on a horse and that's of course the way it is when you're playing as the Kurgit Khanate in Warband as well so I'm not surprised that we kind of have a similar situation here but anyway that's all so all of this stuff 700 I actually do want to look for leather leather is actually something that I am looking for ah there we go there's are you serious one Orton Guard has them for cheap Okay, so let's have a look. Orton Guard, Orton Guard, Orton Guard. Right, so that's where I need to go. Actually, you know what? I'm going to do something um, before I do anything about that. I have a hundred of this, so we probably just want to smelt down a bunch of extra stuff here. Get some more smithing skill. And then we'll just smelt that down too. There we are. Okay, that's fantastic. That's done. So what I would like to do is hopefully with this, uh, with this amount of wrought iron and so on, Hopefully I'm going to make enough money to be able to buy another workshop. And I'm hopeful that I will be able to invest in it around here. Uh, that would be quite nice. Sell the cotton. Uh, hardwood is okay to keep. And that's absolutely fine. Yeah, so there's 2,500. So what I'm going to do is I will go and I will probably speak to... Shall I say, oh no, I, I, I kind of want to change it to be honest kind of want to change the workshop from one of what they actually have here into something else. So let's have a look at what they what they actually have. They have a velvet weavery and an olive press and a wool weavery. They actually have a wool weavery here as well. Not entirely sure why. I don't think they have that much sheep nearby. What about the velvet weavery? How is that doing? I mean, I would love to be able to see the profits of these enterprises and that's something that I think I think it's available somewhere but I I don't know where to look for that so I, I probably need to look in the encyclopedia maybe maybe I could find it there can I look in the encyclopedia now yes I can Ooh, interesting okay so we are currently in Makeb so let's um, let's filter by town there we go and okay so we can basically see 
not much, right? Yeah, not much, unfortunately. So I guess I'm just going to take a chance on the Velvet Weavery, and I will be probably just going with it, right? Should I just go with it? I mean, we do have a brewery here. There's grain very, very close by. So I'm going to actually get the brewery, I think. Mare, mare, yeah, mare, yeah, grain is taken. There we go. So yeah, why not? There's two grain villages nearby. So I think that it kind of makes sense. No? Maybe? Eh. Well, we'll see. We'll see. All right. So let me see if I can... Um, how much grain do they actually even have here? They've got a whole bunch. So it should be very easy for them to make some money here from that. We've actually leveled up as well in athletics. So I will be getting, I guess, two additional arrows, but we're never going to really be on our feet, really. I don't think so, at least. But anyway, let's go and take this caravan. So where, where are they going to go? That's the point. Now let's have a look. What else do I have here? So I've got the bandit base. Obviously, you've seen that that has an insane amount of units there. I didn't go into that one, by the way. That was not the one that I failed at. It was another one that only had about 15 units in it. And, uh, well, let's just say that I failed in the final attack, which is just <laughs> terrible, terrible. But anyway, let's move on. And hopefully we'll be able to get a good amount of relation with these guys, good amount of cash. And bear in mind that our brewery is going to be starting to make money almost immediately. So we shouldn't have to worry about money uh, going forward unless the brewery makes no money whatsoever and is a huge drain on our resources. But if it is, then what I can do is because I already own the workshop, I can just change what resource it actually works with. And then from there, we will have a uh, decent chance of, of something, I don't know. We might be able to change it into a wood workshop or something like that because there is actually a hardwood village nearby. And how much are we actually making? We're making plus 54. It is not exactly great. Mm. But it is something that we've got to consider that um, when we created the wool weavery, it was making us literally about the same and now it's making us 238 which I got to say is pretty nice. So let's see what happens with the caravan here. Okay, wow, it actually just went in and did not get attacked. Okay, that's interesting. Very interesting indeed. Okay, so my riding skill is now 55. And you guys are literally going to get kicked out. There we go. They are going to literally get kicked out. I am so irritated at those guys right now for that one fellow that just decided not to level up. I really can't believe that he was so incredibly dense. Well, maybe I can, because let's face it, it's me, you know. But anyway, I'm just gonna continue taking some prisoners here as well. It's a good amount of cash there too. And yeah, so I'm wondering where these guys are actually heading. Amprila, Amprila, okay. Yeah, it seems like we're gonna be heading over there. I wonder whether they can be attacked on the road or whether they can only be attacked. Wait a minute, no, I'm not about to lose sight of the caravan. Are you serious? I'm right here. Oh well mind but yeah personally i uh, think that having this quest be randomized and them not always being attacked in the same place is actually really cool and it really depends on how many stops they're going to make as well because they might make more stops than before uh, so we're now approaching amprila and we're gonna see if we do get attacked if we do get attacked, it's actually quite nice because it's taken me so long to uh, restore myself. But it seems like, no, no, we are not being attacked. Interesting. You know, I feel like my next character, and uh, don't worry, I'm not going to be creating another character that soon, dependent on which series ends first, which is more than likely going to be Barney's, of course, because he is actually very close to a total domination situation in his game at the moment. But... Anyway, the point is, is that what I'm thinking of, someone did recommend this to me and they said that their experience with it is actually quite cool and I would love to be able to experience it myself as well because I personally have never really created a trader character or a merchant character. The only time that I've actually done that has been in a warband mod by the name of A World of Ice and Fire. That is the only time when I have been a big supporter of trading and 
making money by trades because that's basically the best, most efficient way that you can utilize in that mod to make money because otherwise it's just very, very difficult. And, well, that's the reason. I would love to be able to make a trading character and the Azurai culture is perfect for that because it literally gives you like a, what is it now, 30% discount or something on caravans? And I was literally just thinking about how much money caravans make in comparison to workshops because if you think about it right here, if you look down there, you see that our brewery is now actually making 145, which is pretty good for its second day trading. But the point is, is that caravans will usually make dependent on a couple a couple of factors they'll usually make about a thousand every single day but that of course is dependent on how many units they have in their armies they might have more caravan guards they might make things a little bit more difficult for themselves by being attacked and so on so there are a variety of factors that can affect caravan wages but it, that's, that's, the, that's the point, you know, it's a risk-reward kind of decision to make. And uh, Barney obviously went into the deep end, basically dove in to um, getting, a, uh, getting a caravan almost immediately, which was, a, in my opinion, a mistake at the time, but it actually worked out quite well. But anyway, I'm actually just going to buy some stuff here. Maybe leather is good here, by the way. Yep, I, I might actually be able to buy leather pretty nicely here, and I need four of it. So let's buy four... It's only 730. That's not too bad. And hopefully this guy... Yep, there we go. Okay, so this is actually going to expire, unfortunately. But I will be able to deliver this to the artisan at Baltacand. Or at least I hope I will be able to. Yeah, so I'm going to lose some relation with this guy, which is to be expected. But I haven't really done anything for him beforehand. And hopefully I will be able to do some relation with him in the future. That would be quite nice. But uh, where are we actually traveling to? As far as I'm aware, we're traveling to Kuyaz, which is all the way over there. Are you serious right now? Wow. The game is absolutely trolling me with this particular episode. Every single thing that has happened in my off-screen time and in the episode itself has been some absolutely insane joke. Because... Obviously, as I told you, before I started recording, I had this this guy, this borrowed troop that would just not level up. Then, when I'm actually starting recording, I fail to, to complete a bandit hideout, which would have been extremely easy normally, but apparently my, my people just completely failed in the last fight, because obviously you can't rely on me to do damage. And then we have a caravan quest here, which is taking us into the deepest depths of... Azurai territory and I'm just like why <laughs> what is going on I don't know but I am going to ask this guy about the battle of Pendrake yes we will never forget that day the day we learned the old men who claimed they had the right to rule us were doddering incompetence I was with the vanguard Naretzes apparently knew that the Batanians had planned an ambush the Kuzade scouts had told him but he never bothered to inform us so up we went, along a lovely wooded stream, until the Batanian arrows started whooshing in from all sides. We had our shields, but you can only point them in one direction at once. So we started to drop, one by one, until the Batanian falcsmen came screaming out of the trees. Ordinarily, they'd be very vulnerable to archers, but, well, old Naretzes hadn't thought to send any along with us. So they came upon us, chopping and slashing, and we fought, until we broke. I ran too, and any man who tells you he wouldn't, in those circumstances, is a liar. When I was sitting in the cold woods later that night, hiding with other fugitives, listening to the barbarians whoop and holler as they chopped off heads as trophies, I promised them that no Calradian soldier should again be led into battle by an emperor who knows so little of war. Well, there you go. Yes, exactly. So that's exactly the reason, of course, why this whole civil war thing with the empire has happened in the first place because they all believe, they all have separate, you know, supporters, they all have separate leaders, and those leaders all believe that they should be the ruling factor in the, in, in the entirety of the empire kingdom. And the funny thing is, is that if they actually did unite, 
as one, they would probably be able to completely destroy every single other faction without any problems whatsoever. So there is also that, you know, they, they should really think about that, you know. But as it is, most of the time, people don't tend to think very hard about going to war in these cases. But anyway, this is a steward and a trader as well. That's actually really, really cool. I would like to get her, if at all possible. And there's a reason for this. I would like to be able to use her for a caravan because she has 100 trade skill. I think she would be fantastic for a caravan. So I'm thinking that maybe we're going to ask her and see how much she actually wants to join us because I'm pretty sure considering she's a trader, she's probably going to be kind of good at bartering anyway. My father was a merchant. When he died, he left his children a small inheritance. Most went to my brothers. They headed east to the lands of the Padisha. Padisha? Padisha? Mm. Leaving me in charge of our interests in Calradia. For me to step into my father's shoes and be treated as an equal by other merchants, I knew I had to make a lot of money in a short time, or they would elbow me out of the market. I had an opportunity to buy pepper from another trader who was selling at a discount and needed cash. I, of course, inspected the pepper and its storage. I interviewed the watchman at the warehouse. You can trust us, madam, they said. Rest assured, your pepper is in good hands. But one of them kept a brazier lit at night for the warmth, and a camel kicked it into a bed of straw when he was off relieving himself. When he returned, the warehouse was in flames, and so I became penniless. Wow, that's, that's a terrible, terrible situation to be in. Well, even now I feel I have made a wise decision to buy the pepper. Wise, but unlucky. Such is fortune. Had I not seized this opportunity, other merchants would have mocked me. A woman who lacked the daring to succeed in a man's trade. Instead, they mock a rash woman who lacked a man's judgment. And here I am, looking for work. Well, you have a hundred trade skill, and I would very much like to... Yes, there we go. She joined us for a very, very cheap price indeed. Very nice indeed. I like that. So... We are now going to go to the trade, trade screen for no other reason but to just sell the very small amount of loot that I have. And we are now going to continue on with, with our little, little caravan here. Now bear in mind that what I will be doing eventually, once I have enough money saved up once again, because I'm probably going to need about 15,000 to get a caravan going. I'm going to go all the way back up to Kuzate territory because, well... <laughs> Uh, I still can't believe we are traveling all the way down to Azurai territory right now. It is absolutely crazy. But I will be heading back up to Kuzate after this. And uh, hopefully along the way I will be able to get some more tasks and things like that. And uh, there we go. We are. We have our first child. Fantastic. All right. So I don't know what it is. So let me actually just take a look here. It is a girl. It is actually a girl. Oh, that's interesting. Having a girl first is actually quite exciting because last time we had like, what, seven boys and one girl. So this is actually going to be quite cool. I have no idea what to call her, by the way. So maybe we want to call her like a derivative of her mother's name or something like that. So maybe we can do that. So let's do, let's do something like that. Let's do Yara. Why not? Yara, if that if that is a bad name, then I apologize. But I think that that could be quite nice because her mother is Yana, so she's Yara. Eh, I don't really know. I think that's probably the best I could do without stealing from Barney's series and his children's names. But uh, yeah, anyway, let's see if they actually get attacked. They might get attacked this time. No. What? What? Look at the cash. Oh, wow. Okay. Wow. We just, we just made 6,700. I would expect that actually, because we spent such a long period of time on this. And you know what I'm going to do now? I'm not going to join a tournament. You know, I absolutely love running around at 7.2 speed. I think that is so incredibly fun. I am going to be joining a tournament, by the way. It was just the fact that that particular town did not have one currently running. Now, unfortunately, that's the thing. I did want to join that one over there because it is an Azurai tournament, and I've never done an Azurai tournament, and it would be quite fun to see what they're all about. But uh, I think we'll just uh, we'll do quite well here. As I've said in previous episodes, being able to practice and potentially get a really nice one-handed weapon, that seems like something I, I might like to do. 
But obviously, as you can see right here, we do have our companions joining us as well. Uh, it seems like quite a few Kuzate units in here as well, so this might be interesting. I have thrown weapons. I'm not going to do very well with these. Oh my. Uh, mm, do I have anything else? I've just got a sword, which doesn't really... Oh dear. Ow. Okay, come on now. Yeah, there we go. That is what you get. And now... Yeah, follow it up, follow it up. Come on, Byron. Ah, no, he missed. Take her out. There we go. Did you see that block? Did you see that block? Yeah, I hope you did, because that's the only time you're going to see a block in this particular round. All right, let's do this. Oh, nice one, Badur. Nice one. Good work. You absolutely murdered him. I like it. Very good. Okay, so let's see what I can do with this spear here. Uh, never mind. Never mind. Badur is an absolute beast, or maybe not, because it seems like the Heavy Lancer was the one doing most of the heavy lifting in that. But yeah, these kinds of these kinds of rounds, when there are huge amounts of people, I'm not very good with those. So, <laughs> yeah, I'm not very good with those. Okay, do I have any other weapons? I don't. So I literally just have a one-handed, which is not actually going to be that that good for me. Okay, come on now. No, no, no. Why? Why? Okay, come on now, guys. Just kill this guy. There we go. There we go. Now kill that guy too. Kill that guy too. I'm ang angling him away from you. You should be able to kill him pretty easily. There you go. Team effort, right? Am I right, Badur? Am I... Uh, no, it's not Badur. Never mind. <laughs> just like, yes, am I right, Badur? And then it's just like, I'm not Badur. Get, 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 get away from me. Yeah, that's, that's kind of what's going on there. All right, I have a bad feeling about this. Okay, come on. Come on, friend. I need you to win against Badur over there. For me to actually have... Oh, no. Yeah, yes, 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 he killed Badur. Okay, fantastic. But now he's dead. Yes. Okay, come on, a little bit extra, a little bit extra, just a little bit. I wanted to shield bash him there, but no such luck. Yeah, that's what you get, that is what you get. Okay, you know what I'm going to do? Boom, teabag, that is what you're getting, because that guy was literally way too good and he should have absolutely beaten me but uh, i just got him through cheese you know well not really cheese i guess because i didn't i didn't circle strafe around him or anything like that so i guess you can't really call it cheese but still that's the kind of thing that happens <laughs> i can't believe that guy literally uh just kind of let me let me win right there he, he really did kind of just let me win. All right, so that's a pretty nice weapon, and we actually did win, amazingly enough. Even though in the first round, it looked like we were so totally done. It really did. All right, so Sophia right here. Sophia, as you can see, this is a fantastic weapon. I don't know if she's actually any good at one-handed weapon proficiency, and I don't know whether I really want to give anyone else a one-handed so should I give her that? I mean, it, it's kind of a waste because she's just going to be in a caravan, not really doing that much. I could give Komar it, actually, because he's using a saber. And we'll just give Komar that. There you go. That seems pretty good to me. Anyway, this is the current status of the map. As you can see, if I can turn it around the right way, then we might be able to find out where we are. There we are, all the way down there. We traveled across the basically the entirety of the entire thing. So that's just crazy in my opinion but we have taken Emprela as you can see look at that the Kuzate seem to be expanding a little that's what I like to see I thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time